Bonjour à tous, euh, c'est un plaisir de pouvoir vous accueillir pour cette masterclass. Alors un peu particulière, pourquoi Parce qu'on a quand même l'équipe de Jack Daniels qui vient sur place, c'est extrêmement rare. Donc déjà, un grand merci d'être venu. Euh, Jack Daniels, je pense que tout le monde connaît, euh, mais on le connaît sous une première facette qui est le numéro 7, qu'on va pouvoir goûter, on va vous en parler. Mais il y a aussi d'autres éditions chez Jack Daniels, il y a des très 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 beaux whisky, et on va avoir le plaisir que ça soit présenté par la distribution elle-même. Thank you. Bonjour. Hi, uh, it's exciting to be back in Paris. It's been way, way too long. Um, it's been several years, I think at least four years, four or five years since I've been here. Uh, and how exciting is it to have some brand new whiskeys from Lynchburg to talk about? Um, so it is fantastic to be back here, and it is fantastic to talk about some new offerings from Lynchburg, Tennessee. Um, I really appreciate you taking 30 minutes um, to, uh, to listen and to taste through these new offerings. We're going to compare it, of course, to our classic old number seven uh, before we get into the new stuff. If you have any questions, though, um, you know, I don't really use any type of formal uh, pictures or anything. I don't know who did that. It looks very nice, though. Thank you, by the way. Uh, you're making me look good already. Um, but this is just a discussion over a couple glasses of whiskey. Uh, and so that's the way I approach these things. And I want, I want to answer any questions that you have. Um, Lexi and I are only here for a couple of days. Um, so please don't let us leave unless we answer whatever questions that you have about our products, how we make our whiskey, um, any questions about, you know, the production, about Lynchburg, and, of course, about what goes in the bottle. Um, we love that. So um, before I go any further, I do want to introduce Miss Lexi Phillips in the back. She's hiding in the back. We literally just landed um, like 12 hours ago or so, maybe 15 hours ago. So we're still a little foggy, um, but um, certainly if you have any questions for Lexi, grab her on your way out and, and ask away. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about me. Um, I grew up in Lynchburg, Tennessee. Lexi grew up right near Lynchburg, Tennessee as well. Uh, born and raised for me, and I was around the distillery as a child. And I know that sounds strange that a uh, child is around the distillery. Um, but I had pretty good reason. My grandfather was our master distiller for many years. He started working there in 1957 and retired in 1989 in that role. So when I was a kid, he retired when I was about eight years old. So when I was five, six, seven years old, a lot of times he would take me with him. Um, typically, it was on a Sunday afternoon. You know, things, I guess, were slow, and I, I wouldn't be in the way too much. And, you know, I remember a little bit of running around the distillery with him, and it's beautiful space, and the cave spring water and everything. Um, but, of course, at eight years old, you don't, you don't really know what whiskey is, right? It was just time with my grandfather. Um, and that's what I remember the most. Uh, and most people, though, when they, when they hear me tell that story and they learn about my grandfather, they think that when I was very little that I knew I wanted to be a distiller. Uh, it did not quite happen that way. Um, I think I've already let that out of the bag. Um, and in fact, you know, people think, well, at the very least, you know, I'm sure that your granddad sat you down and said, no, Chris, this is how you nose whiskey properly and how you taste and all that stuff. Um, and that did not happen at all. I'm sorry to ruin it for you. Um, my grandfather did not even give me my first whiskey. It was my grandmother that gave me my first whiskey. Um, that's a true story. She rubbed some on my gum, I think, as, as a young one to, to get me to shut up. I guess my teeth were hurting or something. So I owe it all to my grandma, I guess, in some ways. And um, has anybody ever been to Lynchburg in the room? All right. One, two, three. All right. Very good. Well, for the rest of you, let me just real quickly paint a picture so you know what it's like to grow up there. Lynchburg, Tennessee is in the second smallest county in the state of Tennessee. Uh, and Tennessee is a fairly rural state, lots of agriculture, lots of farmland. Um, so out of 95 different counties, we are number 94. So there's one stoplight in the entire county. The population of the Lynchburg city proper is about 600 people. So there are more people in this building right now than our entire hometown. Pretty small place. And I say that just to kind of let you know. When you're a teenager and you grow up, you go away to school, the last thing you think you're going to do is go back home, right, to a town of 600. And I was no different. I'm a chemist by education, and I actually got a part-time job at the distillery, though, one summer. I came home to live with my parents, and they told me I needed to make some money before I went back to school that fall. 
And so I got a job part-time at the distillery, and that's when I started to learn about how much science goes into our whiskey and the process and making whiskey because the only thing that adds flavor to these whiskeys that we're going to taste today are the grains, right, the water that we use, the yeast that ferments them, and then the wood of that barrel, that brand-new charred oak barrel every time. That's it. There is nothing else added here. This is all Mother Nature, right? All natural product. No flavors, no sweeteners, nothing else added. And so learning that process, I really got intrigued. And when I graduated from university, I got really lucky because the company was hiring for a chemist. And so I I applied for that job. I was lucky enough to get it. I moved to our company headquarters in Kentucky. I lived there, excuse me, about nine years. And then in R&D, I worked in research and development. I got to work on all kinds of different things, lots of things with Jack Daniels and, and making our barrels and all the, the new make whiskey and our yeast that we use to ferment our whiskeys. And, um, you know, working, though, at the corporate office, I got to touch so many different things, right, for about nine years. I actually left the company for a couple years and worked at some other distilleries as their lead chemist. And then back in 2014, I got the opportunity to move home. Uh, and worked for Mr. Jeff Arnett, who is the distiller before me. And I started working there January 2nd, 2014 as assistant master distiller and became the master distiller on October 1 of 2020. So almost two years exactly I've been in the role. So I've been very fortunate to work in distilleries across the U.S., Kentucky, Tennessee, many in Canada, some in Mexico making tequila and been fortunate enough to visit Um, Some of our friends up in Scotland also making whiskey. So, you know, obviously making whiskey in the process of how we turn grain into whiskey is the most important thing to me as a distiller. Um, And I can tell you in in seeing all these different wonderful distilleries really across the world, I believe it is our distillery and our people, our whiskey makers, that make Jack Daniels what it is and make it so special. So any questions so far? No? Keep going? Hurry up and get to the tasting? Is that what I think in the back they're telling me? No? Just a little bit more. Let's talk a bit about process, and I promise we're going to taste after this. I'm not going to forget. Um, What we have to taste is mostly we have two whiskeys based on our Tennessee whiskey recipe, so our classic bourbon-type recipe. And then we have this triple mash on the end, which is quite different. It's actually a blend of three different recipe whiskeys. So um, I'll talk a little more about about that later. But let's talk about how we turn this grain into whiskey. Classic Tennessee whiskey. Let's just start with that. Okay. So our Tennessee whiskey, the recipe is 80% corn. 8-0, 80% corn, 12% malted barley, and 8% percent rye, so very heavy on the corn there. All the grain is brought into Lynchburg on a truck. It's all number one quality grain. It's been pre-cleaned. We don't accept number two grain, and so it's all ground into meal, almost like a flour, corn meal, malt meal, rye meal, and it's cooked in our cave water. We have a cave at the end of the distillery that Jack Daniel actually purchased this land in about 1880 moved the distillery to this location on the other side of Lynchburg for that water source, all right? He knew he had to get more water. Remember, this is 1880. There's no city water systems, right? You have to go find your own water. This water floods the mouth of a cave at the end of the distillery with a reservoir underground over two miles deep full of this water, groundwater that bubbles up from underground springs. We're continually pumping this water out. In fact, we have tanks where we can hold over 10 million gallons of this water in tanks. Just in case if we ever have a really dry, hot summer. I know there's been some dry, hot summers around here recently. Um, We always have plenty of water to back up on and make plenty of our whiskey. So this, this reservoir, even today, makes way more water than we actually need to make our whiskey. So we bring it in and we cook the ground grain. The meal is cooked in that water, okay? Now, back in Tennessee, we call it kind of like making grits. I don't know if you guys have heard what grits are. Some people tell me they use the word polenta in some places. Does that ring a bell? Yes, no, maybe? What's the important? I see some nods in the back. Thank you. 
What's the important thing that we're doing? The starch from the grain is what we're gelatinizing in the water. That starch is what we're going to break down into sugar, which is then fermented by the yeast. So every drop of alcohol in this building is made via the fermentation of yeast on sugar. So after we cook the corn, we add the malted barley. That malted barley is what's going to convert the starches into fermentable sugars, naturally, right? Then the yeast will be added. It will be fermented. At this point, it's beer. Obviously, we're not tasting beer today. This is the point where it will be distilled. So it will be distilled to whiskey, clear as water, right? This high-proof spirit is 140 proof, 70% alcohol by volume off our stills. It's double distilled, two stills. We have a copper column still with a copper pot still. So it's a double distillation process to get that clear whiskey out of that beer, okay? At that point, then we will filter it slowly through hard maple charcoal, okay? Now, this is what enables us to label as a Tennessee whiskey, okay? This charcoal mellowing process. Now, this does not prevent us from labeling our product bourbon whiskey. Tennessee whiskey is bourbon whiskey. All Tennessee whiskey is bourbon whiskey. Not all bourbon whiskey is Tennessee whiskey. Does that make sense? So to qualify as Tennessee whiskey legally, number one, it must be made in Tennessee. That makes sense, right? Secondly, it must be bourbon. Third, it must see some form of that maple charcoal before it goes into the barrel. Remember, the spirit is clear at this point, clear as water. So, does anybody ever use a water filter to filter their water maybe at home? What's inside that water filter? Charcoal, carbon? Yeah, same thing. The whiskey goes in clear, comes out clear, it removes. It removes a lot of the corn notes, right? The heavy cereal grain notes, kind of oily corn. Remember the recipe, 80% corn, right? In that new make spirit, there's a lot of heavy corn notes. But go ahead and pick up that first glass. That first glass, this is the classic old number seven. 80% corn, 12% malt, 8% rye. Just nose it. Just gently nose the glass. Do you get any corn there? Very, very little. Maybe slightly a little sweet corn. Mostly you get sweet fruit notes. Apple, apple peel, banana. Really green pear, yeah, very estuary. Those sweet, fruity aromas are created by our yeast in the fermentation process. Our yeast is very, very flavorful, and it really provides that signature aroma of what we recognize as Jack Daniel's whiskey, okay? By running that whiskey through that charcoal and removing a lot of the grainy notes, it really allows the expressiveness of our yeast to come through in the aroma and the flavor. Question? Yes, all of our products are with the same yeast. We don't change. Let me tell you a bit about this yeast. A lot of people say, oh, it's proprietary, right? If you ask maybe some other folks, there's nothing proprietary at Jack Daniels. Now, we don't share our yeast with anyone else, but let me tell you what we do with our yeast at the distillery. We can date this back all the way to 1938, which is when we started back after Prohibition. Back in that day, they used to take the yeast and they would put it in some water and the grains to give us some food. They would cap it and they'd put it in the creek to keep it cold. Well, we don't keep it in the creek anymore. We have a lab. The lab is there at the distillery. We have a microbiologist that works for on our staff. One of her most important jobs, every single week, she's growing up that same culture of yeast from the mother cells to bring into our distillery and get it into our fermenters to ferment. Um, so we are scaling that up with our own people, our own scientists on site, bringing it in fresh every week. So very, very important to the character of our whiskey. Thank you for the question. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and jump into old number seven. This, I think we've waited long enough. You've suffered through my rambling long enough. Let's go ahead and take a sip. Oh, that's good timing. Wow. Wow. All right, old number seven, perfect thing to just prime the palate. I love the balance of number seven. 
you get a little bit of that sweet fruit on the tip of the tongue. All right, it's just fleeting past the tip of the tongue. That's where you get the sweetness. It builds with a little bit of oak in the mid palate, right in the center and out to the edges, just a slight drying. And then the finish, just a touch of spice on the back end. A little sweet on the front, oak in the middle, a little bit of spice on the back. Nothing outdoes the other. They all work together. It's very well-rounded. This is by far our number one seller. This one is enjoyed in 172 different countries all over the world, all coming from that one little town in Tennessee. It's because of this balance of flavor that I think people all over the world can make a cocktail, enjoy it neat like this on the rocks, mix it with a Coke, right? Make a great old fashioned or a Manhattan. Sure, absolutely. Because of how rounded and balanced those flavors are. Nothing outdoes the other. Um, obviously, if I'm back in Nashville, Tennessee, and I order an old-fashioned cocktail with this, or if I'm here in Paris, or if I'm over in Delhi, right, somewhere, and I order a Jack Daniels old-fashioned, all three of those cocktails will be a little bit different, right? We, everybody knows that in this room. But the whiskey that went in them, exactly the same. We're very consistent in creating this product. We've been making it over 150 years the same way. We make whiskey the same way my grandfather made it in 1957. It's very important to me to say that. Now, we make more whiskey than he made in 1957, um, but we make it the same way. So let's talk a bit about where we're going next, our bonded and our triple mash. We haven't mentioned much about the barrel yet, but as you just look at these next two glasses, you see they're both a little bit darker especially the one probably in the middle for you. That's the bonded. That's going to be a little bit darker. Remember what I said earlier, the grains, the water, the yeast, and the wood of the barrel. That's it. Nothing else is added. So that color is actually barrel. That is that new charred oak barrel. So that barrel is 100% of the color, and it's over half of the flavor, actually. So it's the number one ingredient. So again, Let's think about if you're going to make your own whiskey, would you want to say, okay, I'm going to put my name on this label and this is what I want to do, but, but I'm not going to make most of the flavor actually. Would you want to outsource that, let somebody else make the flavor for you? You probably wouldn't. You would want to control that, right? That's why we have not one but two cooperages where every day our coopers, our men and women, build brand new barrels for us at Jack Daniels to age our whiskey in. Always brand new. We never reuse a barrel. If we re reused a barrel, we wouldn't get that nice, dark, rich color. It would be lighter, more straw-like, okay? Now, let's jump into the bonded. This is the classic old number seven recipe, but bottled in bond. So the big difference here is the ABB, ABV, excuse me, 50%, 100 proof. The regulations around bottled and bond whiskey, number one, it must be American straight whiskey made at a single distiller. You have to disclose exactly where this whiskey is made. Of course, it's all made at Jack Daniels in Lynchburg, Tennessee. It has to be made within one distilling season. A distilling season is a six-month window. Spring season is January through June. Fall season, July through the end of the year. So you cannot mix barrels of different ages. Similar to like a vintage, right? You only have that six-month window to use barrels that were made in that time period. Has to be aged a minimum of four years. That's pretty easy for us. All of our whiskeys are aged a minimum of four years, okay? Has to be aged in a bonded barrel house, federally bonded. We don't pay tax on the whiskey to the federal government until it's put in the bottle. So every barrel that ages is under bond to the United States government until we pay that tax. Okay? And then lastly, like I said, 100 proof in the bottle. Let's go ahead and jump in. So remember, same exact recipe here. The difference, 100 proof. Go ahead and, and nose and taste. Mm. much bigger, richer whiskey, right? The ABV has a lot to do with that. You may have also noticed how dark and rich that color is. We are targeting barrels coming out of the barrel houses that are making a darker, richer whiskey. So we are selecting these barrels specially for this product. 
Now, you might wonder, well, how do you know what's going to be dark and what's not? Well, we don't really know exactly, but when we age our whiskey, we don't heat them up, right? We don't heat the barrels up. We don't turn heaters on in the winter, and we don't turn air conditioning on in the summer. It gets really hot back in Tennessee, well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, right? And that heat does what? It rises. So the upper parts of the barrel house will create darker whiskeys coming out of the barrel because with that heat, alcohol expands more. It soaks further into the wood of the barrel, and it pulls more color and more flavor out of that barrel, okay? So this is not simply old number seven Jack Daniels at 50% ABV. It is more to that, right? We are targeting these barrels, how heavy and viscous that was on your palate, really rich and coated your mouth, a lot more oak on the edges of your tongue and on the finish, right? A really barrel-forward whiskey for people that like a drier, oakier whiskey, and then also it is beautiful in classic whiskey cocktails. It really cuts through and shines through in cocktails. All right. I think I'm okay. Five minutes? Yeah? Good. You guys were worried, weren't you? You get me talking, especially after a no sleep on a plane, a couple of whiskeys, here we go. Let's jump to the very last one. This one is a little more going on here. This is our Jack Daniels Triple Mash Bottled and Bond Whiskey. So Triple Mash, it's a bit confusing, I have to admit. Um, but this is a blend of three straight Bottled and Bond whiskeys. We don't blend at the mashing process. The mashing process is the cooking of the grains. Remember, we grind the grain, we cook it in the water. We don't do the blending then. We actually make three separate whiskeys, right? The classic Tennessee whiskey that we just talked about. We also do a rye whiskey, American straight rye whiskey, which is 70% rye, still 12% malted barley, and 18% corn, okay? So rye whiskey must be at least 51%. We're well above that at 70% rye. 12% malted barley. You might remember, hey, that's the same 12% was in the Tennessee whiskey, right? That's because, remember, the malted grain is what we're using to break down those starches into fermentable sugar. So there's a minimum 12% malted barley in every recipe that we make. And then remember, this isn't double mash. This is triple mash. The third recipe is 100% malted barley, okay? What we're calling American single malt, right? So all malted barley in that. And there is no legal definition yet um, as defined by the U.S. of American single malt, but this is 100% malt whiskey, all made at the one single distillery, of course, there in Lynchburg, Tennessee. So go ahead and pick this last glass up. Let's jump in on the nose. Right away, it's very different, okay? Here's the big reason why. The blend ratio of the whiskeys starts with 60% rye whiskey. So when we start the blend, the base is 60% rye. Spicier on the nose. You still get a little bit of the fruit, but there's definitely some pepper going on there, some earthy kind of herbalness going on. Okay, let's go ahead and jump in, take a sip. But for this one, I want to ask you to do one thing. As it rolls back across your mid palate, right in the center of your tongue, I want you to hold it there just for like two seconds. Just let it sit right in the center of your tongue. And then let it round out there on the finish. The reason I like to let it sit on the center of your tongue, 60% rye, that's where the spice from the rye, I think I hear a couple coughs in the back. Sorry to do that to you, but it's for good reason. It's for a good reason. The spice comes out right in the center, but also you start to get a texture of the malt. 100% single malt. What we learned making malt whiskey, and it was a challenge, barley is not as sweet as corn, and it's not as spicy as rye. So it doesn't have a lot of flavor compared to those two other grains, but it has a really interesting mouthfeel. It's almost like a biscuit, like a toasted piece of bread, it has a weight to it, a creaminess. So 20% of the blend is our American single malt. 
And then, of course, the last 20% then has to be the classic Tennessee whiskey, all made to the bottle and bond regulations. I don't believe there's ever been a whiskey made like this before. American bottle and bond whiskeys are extremely regulated because of all those things that I just mentioned. Single season has to be American straight whiskey. To take three of those and blend them together and offer them here, it's never been done to my knowledge or I think to Lexi's knowledge. If anybody knows of one that's happened before, please let me know because uh, I've been telling people for the last couple of months it hasn't been done. So really different, really different flavor profile, much different than the two whiskeys that we started with. I hope you've enjoyed the two brand new bottle and bond offerings. And then, of course, I hope you always enjoy a good old number seven. Thank you very much. If there's any last questions, I'm happy to answer. Yep. Thank you. Hi, Chris. I was wondering if you knew when the barrel-proof rye might become a, a wider release. Like barrel-proof rye, yes. Um, we are working on that right now. I can tell you the whiskey is ready. I can also tell you the bottles are not ready. It's a glass problem right now for us. Uh, we've suffered through some ebbs and flows of, of glass, and um, we're working on that. It's, it's Basically, priority number one for us right now is getting more glass and getting more of the glass of the quality that we need as well. Um, so that has actually been um, slowed a bit due to glass. But you will see more barrel strength rye whiskey in our single barrel format. It will be coming next year. Question? Est-ce que quelqu'un traduit <laughs> ou pas <laughs> Euh, J'avais une question, en fait, je suis collectionneur et je voulais savoir si le, il y avait une chance que le 10 ans, qui est sorti déjà aux états unis arrive en France. Et à ce moment, il y aurait potentiellement du 12 et du 15 ans à venir. Je voulais savoir voilà, si, si c'était confirmé. Yeah, good questions. Our age-stated series. So um, we are planning our next 10-year-old and a 12-year-old right now. Um, the old age statements that Mr. Jack Daniel had is our inspiration. So Jack Daniel had 10, 12, 14, 18, 21. So that's the inspiration. I don't know if we will exactly replicate those, first of all. We're going to see what happens. We're going to try to do what Mr. Jack did in his day because it's an honor to try to do something that he did. I would love to promise you that they're coming to France very soon, but I don't know. There's, those are very limited. There's not a lot of volume. I can tell you we are making more, and our goal is to eventually make enough to get it outside the U.S. as well. But timing, I don't know. <laughs> I'll ask for your patience if that's okay. Beautiful, beautiful whiskey. Any other last questions? Great. All right. Well, if you have any more, Lexi and I will be around a little bit this afternoon. We'll be around tomorrow. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it.